Hello and welcome to PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Hart. It's solo edition today. I'm going to be going through my top 10 values at ADP ahead of the 2022 season. So I want to crank out, you know, a good three or four of these videos over these next few days. I know we talk about all this stuff 365 days a year over here on the PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. But I know a lot of you have your drafts this weekend, next weekend. So Put them money where the mouth is. And uh, no, I'm not actually betting money here, but I do have 10 guys I've consistently found myself getting at all stages of the draft and wanted to, you know, share that to you guys. And if you nod your head and you say, yeah, Ian, we know you've talked about these guys all year. Good. Now, you know, again. So with that in mind, guys, Trey Lance is my top quarterback of the 2022 season at value right now. My QB seven still seeing him with a fancy pros consensus ADP as the QB 13. I know on sharper websites, underdog best ball, we're seeing him go as the QB seven. And I think that is the right spot for him. It just comes down guys to the immense rushing upside that we get. And the fact that quarterbacks with this sort of rushing volume really don't bust over the past decade. We've only actually had 12 quarterbacks have at least 125 carries in a season. 11 of them finished with top 12 fantasy production on a per game basis not just saying you know look at all these quarterbacks that started 16 games and look at their finishes you know the ezekiel elliott antonio gibson excuse that we make for 2021 per game basis these quarterbacks were absolutely fantastic fantasy assets so for me i do love kyler jalen hurts in round six but if i don't get those guys trey lance in round eight or nine if he has fallen there absolutely love that value in an offense where hey we saw Jimmy Garoppolo lead the league in yards per attempt or become second behind Joe Burrow. Whatever. Screw that. Look at Nick Mullins averaging over eight yards per attempt a couple of years ago, even before Debo Samuel and Brandon Iwick were involved in the equation. So I just think Trey Lance, I mean, if there ever was an offense to help a rookie quarterback, second year quarterback progress and be a better, I guess, uh, be a better more efficient passer than the real life film suggests. I think it'd be one where all he has to do is flip the ball around to Kittle, Debo, Ayuk, and then do the rest with his legs. So Trey Lance, the top value at quarterback, in my humble opinion, ahead of 2022. At running back, Tampa Bay Buccaneers running back, Leonard Fournette, my RB7, ADP, RB13. Lenny's falling to the third round a lot of times. If you can get him at the end of round two, I think that's fine. And guys, I, maybe Rashad White can carve out something here, but maybe not. We've heard Myron Leftwich talk about how hard it is to get Fournette off the field before just because of that constant chemistry that he has with Tom Brady. Last season, only Christian McCaffrey had more receptions per game than Leonard Fournette. I know there's not really an argument about which guy is the better real life receiver but you know what style points don't matter in fantasy football and Leonard Fournette last season was a top five running back in PPR points per game and he was a top five running back in expected PPR points per game he had a top five workload and he was able to give us top five production with it what more do you people want so I understand how he was seemingly on the outs as early as two years ago people say I don't want this running back that was almost a healthy basically was a healthy scratch, I think, in week 14 or whatever in uh, 2020. But you know what? The Buccaneers didn't give the guy 20 million bucks for a reason to not be their featured running back in 2022. So Rashad White, I still think, has decent handcuff value at the right point in the draft. But Leonard Fournette is someone that I believe has a round one workload at a round two or three cost. Same story for the next guy, New York Giants running back Saquon Barkley. My RB8, ADP, RB14 on the rise a little bit. Again, I understand it depends a little bit on the source here. And if he's going, you know, earlier on an appropriate price, good. If he's not, I'm going to scoop him up eight days of the week. Just who's going to get the ball in New York if it's not going to be Saquon? Matt Breida, who couldn't even carve out a role of Brian Dable in a significantly less talented Buffalo backfield? I don't think so. Saquon Barkley, someone that we know has legit overall RB1 upside. And yeah, he wasn't good last year. He averaged 3.7 yards per carry, same amount that Alvin Kamara and James Conner average, and we just don't seem to hold that quite as against them. So I've heard the Saquon quotes. The guy seems to really be playing with a chip on his shoulder. That's all fine and dandy, but ultimately I am in on Saquon Barkley because there's only so many running backs that are the true number one workhorse running back in their backfield that could honestly flirt with 400 combined carries and targets with good health. Saquon Barkley is one of those players. He doesn't even need to be good in order to return RB1 production with that sort of workload. Just look at what Najee Harris was able to do last season. Jacksonville Jaguars running back Travis Etienne, my RB17 going off the board is the RB21. 
James Robinson, someone that just the more and more reports we get, yes, he was able to get off the pup list far earlier than expected, but already hearing that he could be very limited to start the season and ETN could be leaned on as the overall RB1. That's our best case scenario. Don't worry about the Debo Samuel role, guys. The Christian McCaffrey role could be on the table here if James Robinson, in fact, is just not able to kind of have his usual role in the offense. If he does, I suddenly think that we could see ETN become the AFC version of DeAndre Swift. An explosive pass catching running back in an offense that's going to be playing from behind a lot and accordingly going to feature him ahead of the early down compliment. In this case, James Robinson in Detroit, obviously Jamal Williams. So Travis Etienne going round three, round four, even sometimes in these other drafts. Like he is one of the reasons why I'm so willing to start drafts with one or two running backs in the first four rounds. You don't see explosive pass catching running backs like Etienne readily available. And again, round four sometimes take advantage of it while you still can. Moving on to wide receiver, Los Angeles Chargers wide receiver Mike Williams. This is one of the biggest discrepancies I've seen from the best ball, the sharper websites, and then go ahead and looking at the ADP in redraft leagues. He's my wide receiver 13, which honestly I've seen him right around that spot for months over at underdog, but ADP wide receiver 18 looking at the more consensus ranks. So I think Allen and Mike Williams is a great question. I have them right next to each other. I would take Keenan ahead of Mike, but you don't even have to these days. I mean, Mike Williams, the way he's falling down the board you can actually start getting him sometimes in round five after you've already gotten a couple great running backs and a great wide receiver hell maybe even a tight end i don't know you already gotten those guys on your squad for mike williams to still be there a 20 million dollar receiver playing as the clear cut worst case number two best case number one pass game option for justin herbert what are we missing I don't know. I'm all the way back in on Mike Williams. Yeah, take away all his good games last year, and he had bad numbers. Like, do we understand how ridiculous that is? So for me, Mike Williams, man, guys like Debo Samuel, A.J. Brown, I have them ranked ahead of Mike Williams, but I don't think, you know, taking them two rounds ahead of him uh, is warranted. So again, early rounds, I just love loading up on some of these workhorse running backs and even someone like Kyle Pitts because I think the range at wide receiver too, once you get to someone like Mike Williams, Michael Pittman, go all the way down to guys like Allen Robinson, you know, Brandon Cooks, Amon Ross St. Brown, Rashad Bateman. I think you could literally flip that kind of wide receiver too to the high-end wide receiver receiver three tier flip it around and it wouldn't be the most egregious thing ever so yeah we all have our guys ranked appropriately but again getting some of those workhorse running backs early and then allowing yourself to just take the still very talented upside wide receiver twos that just happened to fall and are now going against gross running backs that's been my preferred strategy all off season long Love Washington Commanders wide receiver Terry McLaurin. My wide receiver 15 ADP finally all the way up to wide receiver 16 status. So the quarterbacks that McLaurin has had the privilege of playing with in his early career, Alex Smith, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Dwayne Haskins, Colt McCoy, Case Keenum, Kyle Allen, Taylor Heineke, and Garrett Gilbert. Sadly, Carson Wentz will be the best quarterback that McLaurin has ever played with. And again, just looking at what Terry's been able to do, 13th among 102 wide receivers with 100 targets since 2019 and PFF receiving grade. All the underlying stuff tells us this is an elite receiver, and I think he's finally going to have the elite target share and not quite elite quarterback play, but something just close to average. We'll take below average at this point for Terry and an offense that similar to what we were talking about in Jacksonville. I'm not exactly be playing with a bunch of leads. So Terry McLaurin is someone that is, you know, priced down in the wide receiver two range because of those problems under center. But look at the other guys he's going around. DJ Moore with Baker. It is, it is going to be Baker, but maybe Sam Donald down the stretch. I would and say that's a lot better. Deontay Johnson has his problems. Jerry Judy faces more competition. Chris Goblin, health concerns. Um, Michael Pittman Jr., yeah, Matt Ryan's superior, and I have Michael Pittman one spot ahead of Terry, but again, being able to get someone like a Terry McLaurin, like a Mike Williams, like a Jerry Judy, just accept that these guys are all priced, are all pretty close talents and don't feel the need to reach on one when we have a larger drop-off at running back happening in that early round range. Also still love New Orleans Saints wide receiver Michael Thomas. This hamstring issue that is now plaguing him, not ideal. I prefer for all of our, you know, every single human on the planet to never be injured in any way, shape, or form. But we have gotten some confirmation from beat reporters that know far more about the issue than us. That is not, it is not perceived to be a serious injury. So before that, we were hearing that Thomas looked like his usual studly self. And the fact that he's still going in round six, round seven sometimes is absolutely crazy to me when we have a guy that has proven the ability to to be the overall wide receiver one so yeah 
doesn't have Drew Brees there anymore. Doesn't have Sean Payton to fall back on. There is a little bit more competition with Chris Olave, Chris Olave and Jarvis Landry in the picture. But guys, that's all clearly being baked into his price to see Michael Thomas still have an ADP as a wide receiver 29. He is going around a bunch of guys that are either profiling to be their offense's number two pass game option or even have a chance to go three. Michael Thomas is someone that, again, going has the wide receiver 29. The second we see it with our own eyes, that he's out there in week one getting his usual snaps, being his usual self. He's someone that I think just more than any wide receiver going around six or seven, we could see just absolutely skyrocket up the ranks within a matter of literally one week. Wide receiver Rashad Bateman with the Baltimore Ravens. My wide receiver 29. Seeing the ADP wide receiver 33. Maybe it's the Isaiah Likely hype. Maybe it's just people getting afraid off of Lamar Jackson. But guys, I know Baltimore wants to talk about running like it's 2019 all over again. I'm not sure what running backs, though. Is it really responsible to be feeding the ball to guys like Mike Davis, Justice Hill, if J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards are not good to go early? I don't think so. I think we could see a situation where Lamar is forced to throw the ball more, and that's going to be great news for Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman. So Bateman's someone that clearly Baltimore felt comfortable enough with you know, being their number one by trading away Marquise Brown. Unfortunately, he was injured for all of last season. But once you dig underneath the hood a little bit, you look at things like reception perception from Ace in the Industry, Matt Harmon, you see why so many are in on Rashad Bateman. So again, to have someone that profiles as the clear cut number one wide receiver on their team and could breeze past 120 targets, similar to what Hollywood Brown did last year, I think Rashad Bateman is being priced far closer to his floor than ceiling, as is Atlanta Falcons wide receiver Drake London. Not ideal. He's been hurt, guys. He's not dead. In fact, we got good freaking news that he's going to be back there by week one, seemingly no limitations. So Drake London, someone that once again is being priced as a wide receiver four at this point, but I think we're only a week or two away from seeing the sort of target share that's likely to come his way. That's going to absolutely boom him up the ranks. So London, slightly more expensive than Jalen Waddle was this time last year, but honestly, it's one of these things where when you see a top 10 pick being priced almost outside the top 40 wide receivers you don't need to put much more thought into it go ahead and get that guy on your team there's just too much upside there also love 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 arizona cardinals wide receiver rondale Moore, my wide receiver 48 adp wide receiver 59 from march to june to july to august cliff kingsbury same drumbeat rondale Moore is going to be the starting slot receiver now that christian kirk is out of town and honestly who's gonna take the chase edmonds design targets daryl williams who's a rumor cut candidate you know benjamin who hasn't been able to find the field keontae ingram Huh, I think it could be Rondale freaking Moore, who we already saw the Cardinals get plenty creative with using in the backfield. So I have liked taking a chance on DeAndre Hopkins in round round seven, usually in some of these drafts. The easiest way a lot of times to get through the DeAndre Hopkins suspension is to go ahead and literally four to five rounds later, draft Rondale Moore. So I think where he's going, wide receiver 59. I even think I saw it uh, lo or lower than that earlier today. Where he's going, guys, even if we only get six really good weeks out of him, that's not bad when you start looking at the other guys uh, going around Rondale Moore. So I really think his best case scenario is triple digit targets with 20 to 25 rush attempts. And his worst case is still going to be a guy that you can feel good about in the first six weeks of the season. That is going to wrap up my top 10 values against ADP. Just to relist them real quick in case you guys weren't paying full attention, but I appreciate you anyway. Quarterback Trey Lance, running back Leonard Fournette, running back Saquon Barkley, running back Travis Etienne, wide receiver Mike Williams, Terry McLaurin, Michael Thomas, Rashad Bateman, Drake London, and Ron Dale Moore. So, Guys, top values. I'll be back with top fades, top sleepers, and just have my 10 general strategy tips for fantasy drafts of all shapes and sizes ahead of 2022. I want to thank you guys for checking out another edition of the PFF Fantasy Football Podcast and invite you to check out the PFF Plus Draft Guide where we actually have all this information in my ranks, Dwayne McFarland, Nathan Yonke, Kevin Cole, the whole fantasy crews, updated ranks, updated analysis, everything you could ask for, your one-stop shop for the most predictive fantasy analysis out there on the market. So thanks again for tuning in. Until next time, take care, everybody.